I'm active and recovering. Yeah, if that can be a thing. Yep. Probably a poorly summarized version, how much money you can make, what you can do. And I thought, man, that sounds really easy. He said, hey man, quit being such a wimp. You're jumping over hundreds to pick up pennies. The community would be like a group class. It's your orange theory of the mortgage. Correct. I love that analogy because I'm an orange theory fan. So yes, but why don't people do it every day? Maybe because half our industry has ADHD or more. I don't know. For me, I'm not going to be found dancing on TikTok. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't resonate with me. It's not my audience. And I don't you add index cards when they introduce you to somebody and this is your entire business plan like you'll never go hungry don't try to impact 20,000 people and have a hundred thousand followers try to impact five commit to taking one step forward every day whether that's saying hey I'm gonna call five people a day four private messages or I'm gonna post twice or on Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Conversations with a Recovering Loan Officer. And today I'm joined by coaching guru, Shane Kidwell. Thank you for joining me. I, I just laughed. I, I'd read the title of your podcast and then when you said it, recovering. Yeah. Yeah, I love it, man. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Are you recovering or are you still active? Uh, well, I own a brokerage. I have nine originators. I'm still licensed, but I pass my business off to my LOs. So I'm active and recovering. Yeah. Yeah, if that can be a thing. You still have to go to the meetings. I got to go to the meetings. I, I mean, I was, I had a, a random phone call. It was a local number, so I assumed it wasn't spam. It, I picked up my phone for the first time in a couple of weeks on its own, you know, and it was a past client trying to get a HELOC. And so I had a call, sent it to my team. So I'm recovering, but I'm like, I'm still helping my team do what they can. Yeah. So your business owner, helping Correct. them grow that. And so talk to us about your, your past and then you know, about your program too, not just your mortgage company, but about what you're doing full-time mostly. Yeah. I got to the place I got today because I had some incredible people come into my life and steer me in the right direction. And so that was a, a pivotal couple of moments in my life. But in 2009, I was a full-time fireman uh, working in downtown Seattle. And I had a friend who wanted to get into the fire department and he was a guy doing loans. And he, and he explained to me in a probably a poorly summarized version how much money you can make, what you can do. And I thought, man, that sounds really easy. <laughs> uh, you know, fast forward now, what, 14 years later, and it's not. But I uh, got into loans, got started originating. In 2016, my business coach, who had been helping me build my mortgage company while I was still a full-time fireman, I had a branch at the time, uh, was starting to grow and get some really good momentum locally here in, in the Seattle area. He said, hey man, you know, quit being such a wimp. You're jumping over hundreds to pick up pennies. And we had, you know, weeks of conversations prior to that. Mm -hmm. So he felt comfortable and he used less filtered language than that. And uh, that was the start of me stepping out of the fire department and really building my mortgage career, built an insurance company, a co-working space. And through that relationship, I met some incredible guys that helped me, that, you know, helped me build the foundation of next level loan officers, our, you know, our digital mortgage community for originators throughout the country. Got it. That's pretty cool. So I actually just did a podcast episode earlier today with a with a coach, and that's what you're doing. You're, you you have a community, but you also offer a coaching program, right? Yeah. And so I, I think the coaching and accountability are words that get thrown around a lot, you know. And so I I think that that's important because everybody will say you need coaching, and and what most people really need is accountability. And you can get accountability through a coach. You can get accountability through a peer. You can get accountability through an app. Quite frankly. Um, so we offer, it's kind of all of the above. So, you know, it starts with our foundational digital community. We've got over 12,000 members there, uh, but we do offer accountability, self-paced and group accountability, and then coaching. And it's a la carte. So it's like, if you go to the gym, you can work out on your own and you can get some success there, but you can also work out with a personal trainer and there's different degrees and levels of training. And so we have that in our community as well. The community would be like a group class. It's your orange theory of the mortgage. Correct. You know, coach. I love that analogy because I'm an orange theory fan. So yes, I, I would say it's it's like orange theory, but less loud music. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Although I do like their I do like their music. Yeah, I mean it depends on the coach. But I think the thing for so the thing I loved about and this ties back to what you guys are doing, I think, but the thing I loved about Orange Theory, I didn't have to think about it. I showed up and I was able to like just do the steps that they put in front of me. The hardest part about working out and I think building businesses is knowing the steps to 
your success, right? Laying the foundation, the plan, and then doing the work is not hard. I mean, we all wake up, if we've got a list of tasks to do, we wake up and we're able to get through the list of tasks, but like knowing what tasks are required is a challenge for most people. We're finding is all that is true. However, you know, it's simple. The things that we really need to do to drive revenue in our business, call people, engage online, We call any of these simple things ATMs, actions that matter. But the reality is it's not easy because if it were easy, more than 5 to 10% of originators would be successful today and the rest that are struggling, you they wouldn't be struggling. So and and I, man, if I could bottle up the, you know, the sauce to get people to just do what they say they're going to do every day, there'd be a lot more successful people in mortgage regardless of the market. And and that's where for me I was really blessed because I was a fireman. I just did what I was told to do every day. You know, and I had a rhythm and a routine to everything. The light went on, the bell went off, I got up, put my boots on, went, got in my fire truck, did the same thing every time. So I'm a routine based guy similar to the military. And so, yes, there is a cadence that successful people all share, right? But I, if it was easy and I, it's, so I think simple and easy are different words that we oftentimes yeah. use interchangeably, but because these are complicated things to do, get on Facebook, write some very authentic, simple messages, take pictures of yourself, hanging out with your daughter, talk about the things you like, ask people engaging questions. And then when people respond, take those online conversations offline and build relationship offline. That's really not complicated. But why don't people do it every day? Maybe because half our industry has ADHD or more. I don't know. But yeah, and so that's where coaching and accountability can take somebody. Because I know if if you're waiting for me at the gym and I hate getting up early and I don't want to go meet you at six, but if I know you're there, I'm far more likely to show up than if I'm going to be at the gym by myself. Yeah. There's a reason why, not just for like their business perspective, but why gyms like Orange Theory will charge you money if you sign up for a class and miss it. Yep. It's because they know psychologically, like you're going to, even if it's 10 bucks, you're going to make the trip because you don't want to lose that money. But you don't have to have money tied to it. Like the money is future money. So, like doing these activities leads to an outcome that provides you more money. Uh, all the time. And and what's so interesting is we we have a, like, it's like a three-part guarantee. Like, w- you know, we, we we ask for an annual commitment, not because we need your money or we want to try to take money that we, uh, we don't earn. We just know that you're not going to get the result in 30 days. It takes time. It's like, it's like being a farmer. If every farmer wanted a refund on their seeds after 30 days, there'd be no crops. That's just not the way it works. So, but our guarantee is if you do the things you say you're going to do with a specific cadence and frequency, we guarantee your result. In fact, if you don't double the expense of this this program in new revenue, we'll give you your money back. We've we've never in five plus years ever had to give a refund for that, ever. The reality is people will quit, of course, but they're not quitting because the program isn't working. They're not working the program. And that's true with dieting. And it's why, you know, what, seven days into the new year, the gym is already half full again. I mean, that's just the way it works. So here's what's exciting. I don't want to knock people. I've been there, done that in my own life. What's so exciting is if you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to do what's required and you leverage a simple blueprint to do that, there is more opportunity now than ever before. Fear, scarcity, anxiety is causing people to put their heads in the sand. It's like a deer in the headlights. They're not doing anything. And so for those who are willing to get up, fall forward, make mistakes, learn as you go, like there's a tremendous amount of opportunity today and even more so probably 12 months from now. Yeah. Well, and now is the time to to sow those seeds. Or 12 months from now, you know, as we move into an election year, we know that there's going to be forces outside of legitimate economical forces that are pushing rates down. And so it's, it is a good time to start sowing those seeds. And so it starts though with like making the decision that you're going to do it. Is that right? I would actually say before that making the decision, I mean, yes, but in addition to making the decision is the, you really have to have a foundational understanding of why why it's important. And it always comes back to childhood experiences. I either want to have what I didn't have, or I want to have what I had. I want to recreate my childhood, or I want to avoid my childhood at all costs. And so like, that's really what it boils. Why do you want to be successful? Well, for me, my dad died when I was eight. So I have a scarcity mindset driven into me for the last 33 years. I will not have my you know, life for my daughter, my wife and I 
replicate what I had as a child. So I'm highly motivated. But if I just said, hey, I'm going to go out and make money, I, I decided to do that, but I didn't understand the inner workings. And I, I hate to co- kind of go into psychology, but that's the reality is I sit down and talk to people all the time and, and, and I go, hey, this is the plan. This is what we're going to do. We move forward the plan. A week later, I'm like, hey, man, like, I'll give you an even better example. Yesterday, perfect example. I was coaching one of my originators who has not gotten off the fence and done what they said they were going to do. I said, hey, you know, you live in uh, another state. We, we're licensed in a couple states. They live in a different state. So we're on Microsoft Teams and we're talking through it. And I go, hey, well, what do you need to do to start like getting the money that you need to provide for your fam? I need to call more people. And, and then they started telling stories. And this is what everybody does. They say, well, I'm too old fashioned. And I go, well, hold on. I said, let's run a test. Go find a marketing and sales book from 30 years ago and go, get, list off the top three things you would do back then to make money. And it was like network, in person. Basically, it was call people, cold call. I said, cool. I said, okay, if you do that same thing today, more consistently than everyone else, do you still make money at it? The reality is 100%. So we made a deal. I said, okay, how many people, she had a database of 600 past clients hasn't closed a loan in a couple months. I said, well, how many people could you call tomorrow? And she goes, 50. I go, cool. Okay, let's make a bet. And I, instead of saying like, hey, I'll pay you 50 bucks if you do it. I said, if you don't do it, what's the most painful thing you could think of? And we came up with this thing where she didn't want to have to be an extrovert. I said, great. You're going to have to go stand somewhere busy and hold up a sign that says, honk if you're happy. If you don't call 50 people. Well, lo and behold, she called like 12 people. Oh, right. And then we go back and we go, well, hey, she made a commitment. She made a decision, but something held her back from doing what she said she was going to do. And I would, I would argue that it was something, there was something going on here. She's really still not clear on her why. Been in the business a long time. Why are you doing what you're doing? What is that deep down, deep seated goal, desire, dream, fear that you're trying to address through your, through your business. And so the decision is important, but I think it really starts with the clarity on why do you want to do what you say you want to do? Why is that important to you? And does it really matter? Because I I probably through fear and anxiety, I drove hard. I worked two full-time jobs. I built a personal $50 million personal production business while still maintaining my full-time job as a fireman at the busiest station on the West coast. And I, I drove on that because I didn't want to have that life for my family that I had growing up. Yeah, that's and that's a very powerful mindset, like getting to the root of why is super important. That's the whole idea behind what Gary Keller's book, Start With Why. Yeah. is a great industry, you know. 100% focused book. So yeah, check that book out. That'd be, uh, I'm sure you've read that one. Yeah. There's a really cool exercise I did with a coach and Gary Keller actually was the guy who created this and it's their cards and each card has, I don't know if it's like a passion or, but it's like adventure, love, romance, travel. And with my coach over two hours, if, if there were only like three to five things that could be key pillars in my life that I was every day driving towards accomplishing, what would that be? If it's passion or romance, you're going to spend your time doing things to really get to that goal. For me, it was integrity. It was family. It was adventure. And I got down to like the five most important things in my life. And then I had to decide what were the things I could do every day to kind of check those boxes, right? And so these were simple things that had nothing to do with the mortgage industry. It was every morning starting my day with some sort of like meditation. So some sort of, you know, faith-based meditation, because for me, that was important. It was spending an hour with my daughter every day. And it seems like, geez, an hour, that's not a lot. But like focused, intentional time with my daughter, an hour with a two and a half year old feels like a lot. And then third, it was move. I needed to do at least 30 minutes of movement every day. Again, doesn't seem like a lot, but there's a lot of times you sit at your desk for eight hours, you get sit in your car for two hours, you go home and sit on your couch for four hours and you're not moving. And so those were the things for me in my life that really helped me feel accomplished every day and had nothing to do with mortgage. And so I think that, and, and that was from this example, this this practice that Gary Keller put together that was really getting down to the the roots of what's important to you in your life. And it may not be, when you go through that exercise, it may not all lead to like massive cold calling and, you know, social media posting or TikTok dances, or it may not lead to the things that you might expect based on all the coaches you're hearing from today. It may lead to something more, like getting involved in the community. Maybe it's like, yeah. you know, it could be in, there's ways of, if you want to, there's ways of, of leveraging those activities into business in the future 
if you think about it that way. I think the best personal trainer takes the body of work in front of them, you, and helps you become the best physical version of yourself. Like they're not going to make you into something that you can't be. If you were in a severe, like I have a couple severe back injuries. I'm not going to be able to achieve or do the same exercises as a 22 year old college athlete rehabbing from an ankle injury. Right. Just different. Yeah. My level of success is going to be dictated by me and my circumstances. And that's true in business. Like for me, I'm not going to be found dancing on TikTok. Right. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't resonate with me. It's not my audience. I don't, I don't like it, but that's not, please don't hear me say that it's not effective for some people. I know people who are extremely effective at generating leads for their mortgage business through TikTok, right? right? So again, it's it's about finding the the three to five things that you can commit to doing every day that are it's, it's, it is or it has and it continues to drive your business forward. And for me, number one, it's engaging on social media, but it's engaging on the platforms with the people that I resonate with and resonate with me. So it, again, like young younger people than me, I'm 41, the big man, Facebook's for old people. I'm like, old people buy homes and old people resonate with me. And so like I get leads all, I'm, I'm not even originating anymore. I'm licensed, but not originating. So I'm not pushing that message. I still, I just got another lead today on a loan through my organic social media. Now I've added LinkedIn because there's tremendous power in LinkedIn. It goes completely untapped. And I've got Instagram because my agents are on Instagram, right? But I'm not on TikTok. Now I'm, I'm building YouTube as well. And so I think social media is a huge component of what everyone should be doing at some level. It doesn't have to be the only component, but it, it should be one of them. Yeah. I mean, I think your advice to call you, you know, with your client yesterday was really powerful because you can actually just focus on those 50 calls a day and build a strong business because everyone's connected to other people. I'm, I remember back in the day hearing a coach talk, I think it was Rick Ruby. And he was basically saying like, you have an index cards and you just literally go like this and you put the index card in the back and you pick up the next one and put it in the back. And you just cycle through it and you add index cards when they introduce you to somebody. And this is your entire business plan. Like you'll never go hungry. Correct. You know? Yeah. And, and the reality is the secret sauce is consistency. Yeah. And there's, I would argue there's probably almost no bad strategy. There's just bad execution. And so, you know, if you're listening to this and you're telling yourself a story, we all have a little guy on our shoulder probably two, good and bad. And if that story that's being told to you that you're telling yourself is, I'm too out of touch, I don't know technology well enough, or whatever that may be, you're flat out wrong. You're just not leaning into the things that you're an expert on with enough consistency. If it's BNI groups, you can still make significant money being in BNI groups if you're really doing it at the highest level you possibly can. Most people are half ass in everything. And we went through COVID with too much business. We didn't have enough time. It like We would be leaving money on the table if every experience we had was a 10. Now, maybe that was the right call, but I wasn't going to encourage my people to leave money on the table. There was generational wealth to be made and people made it. So we all got lulled into this expectation of my seven or my six is good enough. Ever improving market, that might be true, but in a traditional market, in a real market, in a healthy market, you've got to bring your A game. You got to be a 10 at everything you do. I mean, if you look on my socials, yesterday I asked a question about this book that was discussing the Four Seasons Hotel. It's an older book, but it like I'm going back to that because it's so important. It's, you know, the Four Seasons has an, a level of expectation that's a 10, everything they do. And so I, I asked another client yesterday, I said, man, are you taking a white velvet glove and walking around checking for dust on your trash cans? They kind of laughed. I go like, that's got to be the mentality you take into business. Everything you do, you should be striving for perfection. Not to say that you're going to you know, quit if you don't achieve that, but that's got to be the goal. You got to be creating social media. You can't just be vomiting loan volumes or or new, you know, the new conforming loan limits or or any changes. What is the strategic value you're trying to get out of what you're doing online? Like what's the, what's the intent that you have? Because intent is going to drive action, which is going to drive results. If I intend, I want you to reach out to me in a specific way, I should probably give you a shout out. I should probably love on you. And they're gonna be like, who's this guy, Shane? And then I see you posting and now I'm intentionally commenting on your stuff, not just liking it, not just, again, vomiting words that don't have any meaning or impact. And pretty soon I reach out to you three months later and go, Michael, I love what you do, man. I've been seeing you online. I love your story. I love your values. 
I see that we actually run in similar circles. I'm doing something in your market and I'm going to be in your area next week. Man, I would love to just grab 10 minutes to just like give you a fist bump in person, connect briefly. How's your week look? Now, if I'm un in, unintentionally operating online, that doesn't land well. If I do it in, with intention, you're like, dude, I've been seeing that guy for a couple of months. And man, you know what? He's actually been commenting on my stuff and liking what I'm doing and engaging with me. I'm, if I'm adding value to you online, I'm going to have a much better likelihood of getting you to respond in the way that I want you. That's that intent. And that leads the actions. And that leads to impact. So how do you do that with like sincerity? Because I think a lot of people, they, they feel that there's this, you know, they say keyboard warrior, you know, yeah, kind of like from the other side of the screen, like how do you do that? Not just like fake it, but like be sincere with your actions when you're engaging with those people. I want to work with people that I could be friends with. And so for me, I'm not engaging with people. Well, for one, I think people are pretty unauthentic. And authenticity is a word that's been thrown around far too much, right? Like I, I said, if, if I see you online with a backwards hat and I see you in person in a suit, I'm going to question your authenticity. And, and I don't, suits are great. Backwards hats are great. I don't care. But your online persona should be your in-person reality. <clears throat> and I think most people are not doing that. They're looking at social media as though it's a billboard of whatever you want to position yourself as, it's a mirror. It's a mirror that will multiply you to more, more people if you do it effectively. So I think that's just gotta be foundationally where you start. So if you're coming and positioning yourself authentically with a goal of really just bringing value to people, that's gonna be felt. Like I know your company and I know what you do. Like if I can, I should try to benefit you and your people every time I interact with you online. If I do that, you're like, man, this guy's really helpful. This guy's really kind. And so A, for me, it's all about being truly authentic. I ditched the suit. I, I went with hoodies and backwards hats and things that I was comfortable with. And that meant that I had to show up like a 10 every day because my attire wasn't necessarily positioning me as a traditional financial expert. And so when I'm online, I'm actually taking the time to get to know you through your profile. I'm looking at your stuff. I'm not just like swiping. I I, I, I once worked, uh, I had an MSA in a local real estate company's office and the designated broker was in his in his desk. I'd see him all day just like poking on his phone. And I'm like, Jay, what are you doing? Because I'm just liking people's posts. Like if you're that guy, you're, you're going to get no value from social media. Super disingenuous. What I do, I get online. I see somebody struggling, doing well, whatever. And I'm going to reach out to them through private message. Like, bro, how are you doing? How's life? Hey, congrats on this. Like I'm actually using it as my main form of organic, authentic, personal communication. Yep. And so I think if you have that mindset, you're not going to go wider. You're going to go deeper. And one of the misnomers with social media is, oh man, I can, I can impact 20,000 people. It's like, no, you're not. Like, don't try to impact 20,000 people and have a hundred thousand followers. Try to impact five a day. I mean, I had a post that I don't even know how, Michael, but it went viral. I, we could look at it. I probably have like 11 million plus impressions on this post. Nice. And I think I just got lucky, honestly. Like some guy who liked it went viral. And it's like now it's all over the world going viral. How much money do you think I've made on that post with 11 million impressions? Zero. Zero, yeah. Now, on the flip side of that, I posted one day about, you know, going out in my Ford Bronco I'm not like an expert four buyer, but I, I just wanted to do it. I scratched my car up. We went out, we had a bunch of fun and I had 2000 impressions, 45 comments. Like that's a good solid post, but nothing that people online would be like, oh man, that guy's an expert on social media. Well, on that post, multiple realtors were engaging with me. One who I have not cold called, I've done nothing direct with, but he's my friend online. He reached out, he's like, hey man, you seem like a really cool dude. We got, you know, similar experiences. I like your positivity. I also like to go four buying, right? I'm like, oh, funny you'd mention that. And he runs a real estate team with his wife. Like that's generation of revenue through authenticity, right? And I think that that's what we need to be doing more of if we're just talking about our online marketing. Isn't that the easiest way anyways, because you're not fighting your nature. If like you're posting about the things you love and you do anyways, you're yes. going to attract those people that know and love to do those same things as you. It, it sounds silly or or almost like condescending when you repeat it back, right? Yeah. But it's 100% true. I think the problem is, again, we see somebody with a white picket fence online 
and we instantly label that as truth and reality when the reality is it's probably not, right? And so they're like, I got to be what that person's being online. And the reality is I talk about growing up with depression. I talk about having a bad back. I talk about how like I failed in business. I've done well in business. I, I've had bad business partners. And I, could, I just tell about my life. And my job is to be authentic and honest. I want people when they see me online and they see me in person, they're getting the same guy. Like it or not, they're getting the same guy. And when I do that, I don't have to be the guy who's putting on a new mascot costume every time you interact with somebody. Oh, you you want me to be the seven day a week guy? Sure, sure, hold on, let me switch my outfit really quick. Oh, you want me to be the marketing strategist? Hold on, let me switch into that outfit. No, man, I, I am who I am. I've been that way for quite some time and it's one of the most freeing ways to market. And then social media can can be like pouring jet fuel on a fire. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I just have two examples here of this. And then maybe a personal example. I know one loan officer who literally, he just posts what he eats for lunch every day. That's yeah. his marketing strategy. He literally is like, I got Chick-fil-A again. Here it is. Boom. 46 nuggets, you know? And these realtors are just into it. I don't yeah. understand it. They're just weird. <laughs> it's so weird, but like he's built a niche and a business based on like the foods he's eating. Yeah. yeah. All fast foods, like massive pizza. Boom. How do you not weigh 400 pounds? That's what I want to know. First off. <laughs> yeah. He needs orange theory. Yeah. Oh, maybe he does. I mean, cause he doesn't weigh 400 pounds, you know? So it's, it's, I don't know what he's doing, but for my own personal experience. So like back in 2020, when rates were super good, I opened a brokerage of my own just to like help mom and pop help like my friends and family get cheap, cheap loans. It was not to make money. But I, then I was like, man, maybe I could like find a niche. Cause I, I used to have one I launched in the, in the golf space where I just like focused on attracting golf realtors. But I said, I'm not really into golf anymore. I like mountain biking. So I found out, I found a list of realtors who mountain bike. I picked them up, picked up the phone, just started calling, said, hey, introduced myself and said, let's go for a ride. And then started building friendships that way. And man, it worked like a charm. You know, it's like, cause it was based on something we enjoyed outside of it. I did ask for a business. And like, before I knew it, I had 10, 10 realtors, all mountain bikers that I was friends with, still friends with to this day. And they were for a business. There's no easier way to operate in lending than when you're hanging out with your friends. Yeah. If a friend calls me on a set, he says, hey, man, can you do me a solid? I got a quick question. I got this guy. He wants to go look at a home, but he said the phone. Like, I'm totally comfortable taking that call. If somebody who treats me like an order taker and doesn't see me as somebody of value in their life is abusing my time, calls me on a Sunday, I literally want to throw my $1,200 cell phone into the lake. You know what I mean? And, and same request, completely different feeling. And so I think that to your point, if we leverage social media to create digital online interest groups that we take offline, we're going to win. I've got a good friend who who drinks beer and he brews his own beer. Yep. And he's and now he posts about brewing beer all the time and he's hanging out with agents who like to drink beer. They're doing tastings. I mean, you can really dive deep on these things. Again, going deeper versus going wider actually generates more exposure. That's what's crazy about yeah, it. Does. Yeah. It does. And you don't need, like if you want to be healthy in business, successful, even just building that generational wealth, deeper is better than than wide. 100%. You know, and, and it's interesting because those people that you build those deep relationships with you, they also have friends who resonate with them who are in the real estate space or even in the mortgage space, which you can then recruit them to your business. And you build this channel of people that know, like, and trust you and, and resonate with you. And that's so much more powerful than like, what are the, all the TikTok? Here's my Lexus and my jet, my Ferrari. I mean, you know, that's just weird. Well, one of the fundamentals of marketing that the last year, so I, I opened a co-working space and my own mortgage brokerage. And I'm not an expert on either. And boy, I stumbled out of the gates on both of them. I've learned a lot about business. I think one of the things that in our industry, most people are not experts on the things that actually benefit them the most. Marketing, sales, business ownership, finance, <laughs> bookkeeping, accounting. I, I, I didn't know anything about any of it. I think what's so important to understand when it comes to marketing is like we need to find what people want and give them what they want in the best packaging we can create. People don't want a mortgage, so don't give them a mortgage. 
Give them a financial tool. It's like I said to a, a, a guy yesterday, I said, man, it's the hole versus the shovel. Whether you need a hole dug to create a pool or you need to bury a body, you need a hole dug. If I sell shovels and I know what you need that hole for, the urgency behind that, I can sell around that and sell you an overpriced shovel and you'll thank me for it. But not enough people in mortgage in real estate actually understand fundamental basics about marketing. Yep. They don't understand what does the audience that they're they're hanging out with actually want. So you go on social media or you go in a text message campaign or a cold calling campaign and like they don't understand the people they're calling. Real estate agents don't want you to call them on a Monday morning. That's their Sunday. Like that's that's how we feel when they call us on Sunday. Right. Right. So, so understand your audience and align your marketing to that audience. Understand the hole versus the shovel. Speak to what they want and then give them what they need to get what they want. Yep. I mean, it sounds simple, but how do you learn to do that? Like, what do you, is there, uh, do you have resources or a book? Or, I mean, or obviously we could hire you as a coach, but yeah, you got to be a student. Um, I'm probably that annoying guy who asks why a lot. You know, it's, a, and I, I like to, to pry in a good way. It's like, Hey, like, tell me more about your business. Why do you do that? Or where did you get that? So I'm a student. I'm always asking questions. The crazy thing about like the time you and I are recording this podcast, I don't think there's ever been more free, high quality information readily available than now. Yeah. Like coaches, experts, marketers, brand designers, every, everything is available at your fingertips for free. So I would say one of your ATMs, your actions that matter that you should do every day that you want to generate revenue, you should be a student. Take 30 minutes to listen to a podcast, an audible book. I mean, there's there's tools like Blinkist that will summarize books in 15 minutes, yep. right? So make a commitment to every day be learning. I, I was sitting down on my couch a couple months ago and I kind of lost a little bit of steam. I was sick. I wasn't feeling great. And I was watching Netflix. And I was watching something that added like no value to my life. I, I just, I'm sitting here getting dumber by the minute. And the little voice on my shoulder said, you should really be spending this time like adding more value to your life. What if everything you consumed gave you knowledge? And so I thought, man, that's, man, that's right. I got to stop, you know, just turning my brain off. And so I started watching educational things, right? So if I'm going to watch TV, I'm watching like National Geographic or I'm, watching a documentary, I'm learning. If I'm in my car, I'm not listening to talk radio. I'm listening to an audible. So for me, it starts with asking a lot of questions, being willing to put yourself out there and say, hey man, do you mind if I take you out to coffee and pick your brain? When I became a fireman, there was 4,500 applicants for 20 jobs. And like in the area I live, if you're a white male, you are not getting preferential treatment. So I had to work extra hard to get in to my field. And so anytime I met somebody who was a fireman, I said, can I take you out to coffee? And most were awesome enough to be like, yeah, you can. Here's my number. And I would call them and say, hey, can I take you out to coffee? And say, what, what do I need to know? Tell me more about your profession, where you work. Tell me about, I just asked a lot of questions. And I think people are afraid to admit that they don't know things. And so they're afraid to ask questions because then they're going to be like exposed for what they are, which is somebody that has drive, but not a lot of experience. And that that's been me my entire career. Isn't that like the, what well, they say, the imposter syndrome? People are afraid to feel like they don't, they don't know. So they have this veneer that's sort of like the, you know, the vision of success, even though inside we're not sure how it works. So you're, what you're saying is that it's actually more valuable to building relationships and to be authentic if you are like seeking information and asking yeah. for it from people. 100%. I mean, that's the biggest thing that's helped me. I mean, I, I have a bunch of different businesses now. I have an insurance company. I have apartment syndications. And and people always go, how'd you find out? It? Like, how'd you get involved in that? I'm like, I asked a guy. I heard a podcast. I reached out to him. I said, hey, I like your podcast. Do you mind if I pick your brain? I'm like, you did what? Or like, how did you get a co-working space? I asked a guy, you know, and, and that's what I've done my entire career. Yep. That's really cool. I mean, that's that's great advice. And you can do the same thing in the mortgage space, right? Because there's tons of people that are willing to help. And I'm one of like a hundred mortgage podcasts. So, I mean, you could listen to a different yeah. podcaster every day and we're all trying to bring some kind of value. And so, yeah, Shane, it's been great chatting with you. If there was any one like takeaway that you could give to our listeners today, 
um, now would be a great time for that. And then I'll leave them with, maybe you can just leave them with your information on how they get in touch with you. Yeah, I think, you know, like we kind of talked about before, pick two or three things a day, commit to doing something every day. Like commit to taking one f- step forward every day. Whether that's saying, hey, I'm going to call five people a day. Whether that's I'm going to send four private messages or I'm going to post twice or I'm going to go to one event a day. Just pick something simple and commit to doing it. Do it. And then when you break your word, don't be too hard on yourself. Hit reset and start over. And I think that if you're doing that with truth, with like authenticity, it's going to help you grow your business. That's great. And so like I, I always like to talk you know, to loan officers about that process being playing offense in your mortgage business versus like just playing defense, just dealing with the things that come to you is just, yeah, those three things, simple checklists. That's awesome. Great advice. How can people get in touch with you or get involved in your coaching program? Yeah. I mean, you can find me on all the socials, just Shane R. Kidwell. I'm on all of them. Uh, if you want to get involved, we have a free community in addition to our 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 paid pro membership. So it's completely free. We, we removed any excuse for people not to get involved. You can go to becomenl.com join our free next level community. It, there's incredible people sharing ideas. And just like you said at the very beginning, you could just take other people's ideas and replicate what they're doing with your own flair and authenticity and you'll win. You can do all that for free if you want to take your business to the next level and you want to get in high level conversations with people who are sharing high level ideas, learning from people who've lost a lot of money doing things that doesn't work. I think I probably made more money avoiding doing the wrong things in many cases than I did doing the right things. And I think that's super important. So become nl.com, hit me up on social. I'm always willing to uh, give advice, whether it's good or not, is up to the person getting it. Love it. Awesome, man. Thanks, Shane, for your time today. And uh, look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thanks, man.